Hey guys, welcome to the video. It is 7S26 Simon. We are going to take a look at a box called Alfred. This is on Try Hack Me. This is a premium room. So just want to give you guys an idea, you know, if you do subscribe to Try Hack Me, the kind of boxes that are on here. Now, I'm not in any way affiliated with Try Hack Me. I'm just someone who really enjoys the site. So I there's no commission uh, from this whatsoever. Uh, I just want to show you guys, you know, really what this has to offer. So essentially, we're going to just really dive real quick into this box. I'm not going to explain things too much as we go along, maybe just a little bit so we can kind of understand what's going on. Obviously, the research is for you guys to do in your own time, uh, but I just want to give you some sort of uh, pathway, some, some way to kind of help you uh, figure out whether... You know this is something you want to do want to get involved in so we've logged into the jenkins box we're going to go to uh, configure the project and if we scroll all the way to the bottom you'll see that there is an execute windows batch command so in this case it's got who am i what we are actually going to do is we're going to try and get a reverse shell running on our machine so if i paste in this command here. This is essentially going to pull a PowerShell command over to the actual box and in return it's going to hopefully grant me a reverse shell. So let's hit apply and when that's gone there we go let's hit build now and hopefully hopefully we should start to see a connection over to our HTTP server and that should hopefully once again grant us uh, access, which it does instantaneously. Uh, so it's grabbed the PowerShell, invoke the command, and if we do a who am I, you can see that we're running as Bruce on the Alfred, oops, on the Alfred uh, machine, Alfred domain. Okay, nice, so what do we need to do next? Well, next we need to create the malicious file, which I've already done here, malicious.exe. So the next step is to essentially download that file. So if we run this command here, let's hit apply. And hopefully this will download the uh, command. I wonder if, set command to pending, run with timeout, execute shell. I'm just wondering whether there's a way we can instantaneously, let's hit build now, just push that out because what I've actually found is that you can't seem to complete one build without closing out the other one. So what I mean by that is if we go back to the project, you'll see that two is basically still running, which is this uh, netcast command here. I don't, I'm not aware of any way in which to build two is in progress, apart from cancelling the command, the netcat listener, and then it suddenly downloaded the executable. I'm not aware of any way to force that through. Maybe there's a way, I'm sure there will be. Um, it's not a huge issue because all it means is that we just simply need to go back and we need to use that previous command. So if we go back here, hit apply once more, we've got our netcat listener ready there. We can close that one down slightly. Okay, let's go to project and let's hit build now. So we should once again get back to our shell. It's just a bit weird, uh, a bit clunky that we have to do that really. Anyway, uh, what we now need to do is we now need to create a handler over in MSF console. Uh, we need to use a payload of Windows Interpreter reverse TCP. This is all in the room when you uh, do it. This is all explained. So we've already downloaded um, the file. So what we use is this uh, start. Let me paste this in start process and then the shell name so let's 
Uh, I'm going to have to cancel out of that actually. Ah, didn't mean to. See, this is it's just quite a clunky setup, so you've really you've got to be quite precise with this one. Um, I'm just going to type this over on the other screen and copy and paste it over. So hopefully this will get us our reverse shell again. Now. Let's go over to projects. I see the status. So build for in pros. Let's kill that one. As you can see, it's really easy to make a mistake if you type in the wrong thing. You, it kind of takes you back a few steps. Um, build project four. Here you go. So we are back where we were. So if we do a DIR, we can see our malicious.exe. Let's start the process at the same time. Let's look at our handler. Let's start it and hit run. And then suddenly we've got our interpreter session. So let's drop down to a shell. And if we type in who am I? Priv. We can see here a bunch of privileges and whether they are enabled or disabled. Um, so the ones we actually care about are the impersonate privileges. We can impersonate a client after authentication and um, that is enabled. The debug privileges are also enabled. So what this means is that we can, if we type in exit, we can go back to interpreter, use incognito, make sure that's spelled correctly. And then if we do a list tokens minus G, this will give us a list of everything that we can, with everything that's available for us to take over. So you can see here that built-in administrators is available. So now if we do a PS, that's a process list. And let's go up, we can see services, EXE is running on uh, process ID 668. So let's do a migrate to 668. And once that's complete, which shouldn't take too long to be completely honest, let's do a get UID. And you can see we are the NT authority system. Now, what we have to do in order to get the root flag is uh, simply run search minus F root. And what this is actually doing now is it's searching the file system for a root flag. I always find this is easier and capture the flag. It saves you having to go around hunting around the system for flags. I've got no time for that, guys. So let's wait till this is complete. Again, it shouldn't take too long. It's relatively quick considering, you know, what we're doing. Just give that a few seconds to run. We might actually need to run, we might actually need to change that slightly. Let's run root star. There you go, that's a lot quicker. So that's found that root.txt file. So if we drop down to a shell again, and let's CD over to this config directory, do a DIR, we can see that Obviously, you've got some system files there, but this this here is the kind of aim of the game. So if we do who am I once more, we can see we are the entity authority system and that is the flag that we need to capture. So that is it for this session. I'm going to end out the video here, but something we'll be talking about on my blog very soon is these tokens 
we're going to maybe understand a little bit more about how the tokens work and maybe a little bit more on Jenkins. Who knows? Maybe there's some more Jenkins rooms that we can take a look at. But I hope this has been useful. Please feel free to check out the blog. I'm just going to paste this in here. So the blog is this here, 7s26simon.wordpress.com. I probably will look at launching a Patreon channel at some point, Patreon uh, scheme. So if anyone wants to, uh, you know, look at that, that's coming soon. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.